While working at the FFTF, you find yourself about to enter a confined space marked by this sign. The sign is there to inform you that there is a possibility of that space becoming oxygen deficient. Would you know what to do in this situation? In two breaths to you learn some general information about oxygen deficient spaces. If you walk into an oxygen deficient atmosphere, you won't have a single warning and it's too late to hold your breath. You'll take two breaths and you'll collapse. In this presentation, we will look at two types of inert gas found in the FFTF which can displace oxygen. The precautions which are taken in the plant to cope with oxygen deficient environments and some procedures which you should know when working in a space which could become oxygen deficient. Argon and nitrogen are inert gases. This means they have little or no ability to interact chemically with other substances. Because of this, they are used to separate or inert potentially volatile materials. Argon is used as a cover gas and as a buffer between seals in various places throughout the FFTF. Since it is heavier than air, any argon that might leak may sink and concentrate in low-lying areas. Nitrogen is used for valve actuation to inert primary sodium cells and to flood secondary sodium cells in an emergency situation. Nitrogen is a light gas which mixes freely with air. It may be found at all levels. These gases are not in themselves toxic. They are hazardous because they displace the oxygen which is necessary for life. The normal amount of oxygen found in air is 21%. The minimum amount of oxygen necessary for a work atmosphere at Heddle has been established at 19.5%. This is very conservative since physical effects are not perceivable above 16% oxygen. However, all monitors in use at the FFTF have their alarms set at the 19.5% level. Entry into a space with less than 19.5% oxygen requires use of approved respiratory protection and compliance with administrative procedure. Permanent oxygen monitors are situated at the FFTF in the following locations. Areas where there is a high potential of an inert gas leak, such as a secondary sodium cell, and in areas where there is little ventilation or air circulation, that is, where the air is changed less than one and a half times per hour. As previously stated, these monitors react to the 19.5% oxygen level. When this level is reached, an alarm will go off. And if the monitor is located in a high noise area, a rotating beacon will also be activated. In addition to having permanent oxygen monitors, all cells in the FFTF will be marked by this sign. Requirements for access to the space will be indicated on the sign. The degree of oxygen deficiency potential in the space will determine what actions are required. Common requirements include use of personal oxygen monitors, use of the buddy system, use of additional ventilation equipment, notification of the control room, and a five-minute escape pack available for immediate use. Let's take a closer look at these requirements. There are two types of personal oxygen monitors in common use at the FFTF. The GasTech OX80 is the most commonly used. It is worn at waist level, and its alarm is a loud buzzing sound. When the GasTech is switched on, this alarm will sound briefly to let you know it is operating properly. If the alarm continues sounding intermittently, 
it is a signal that the battery is low and needs recharging. To check oxygen levels in the space surrounding you, press the button near the readout window. The level will be shown in digital figures. The Edmont Wilson monitor is also worn at waist level. Its alarm is a high-pitched whistle. If the alarm sounds when the Edmont Wilson is first turned on, it is an indication the battery is low. The sensor for the Edmont Wilson is attached to an extension cord. It may be lowered into a cell prior to entry in order to check oxygen levels. Once again, these personal monitors have their alarm set at the 19.5% level. When an alarm goes off, take immediate action. Oxygen monitors are your first line of protection. Believe what they tell you and make certain you know how to operate them. The buddy system is a well-known preventative measure, which has saved thousands of lives. In this instance, one person must remain outside the space and maintain either visual or verbal contact with their partner. Additional ventilation for confined spaces may be provided by such equipment as portable blowers and flexible hose. Another means of letting others know your whereabouts is to call the control room prior to entry. If this procedure is posted, you must also notify the control room and confirm your departure when you leave. Know when and how to use a five-minute escape pack. Before using, check the gauge on the unit to ensure it is charged properly. If an oxygen monitor alarm goes off, don the escape pack immediately. Open the case, pull out the unit, unfold the mask, Hold the ring. If you hear a hiss, the unit is working properly. Pull the mask over your head, adjust the neck seal, and then the drawstring. The yellow tab tightens and the red tab loosens. An important point to remember is that the escape pack is to be used for escape only. It is not to be used for rescue purposes. In an emergency situation, your job is to get out and warn others. Don't become a victim yourself by trying to rescue someone without the proper equipment. Call the control room and the emergency response team will initiate a rescue action. The most important aspect of safe entry into a confined space is your knowledge of safety procedures. When you are to work in a confined space, remember, argon and nitrogen may cause a hazard by displacing oxygen in the air. Permanent oxygen monitors are situated in all normally accessible spaces which might become oxygen deficient. Signs are posted at the entrances to all confined spaces, listing requirements for entry. Heed the requirements and, if you are wearing a personal oxygen monitor or five-minute escape pack, know how and when to use them. When an oxygen monitor alarm sounds, immediately don the five-minute escape pack, leave the area, and notify the control room. You are the most important part of any safety program. Your knowledge and use of safety procedures will go a long way in helping to keep the FFTF a good place to work.